do this. Everybody do Mokozi wetu Yesu bwana mama bwana
to Yesu Bwana wa mabona Shangilia, we want to Shangilia. Everybody put your hands like this. One, two. I'm 
ametukuka ametukuka bile ametukuka ametukuka with understanding 16 25 and 26 we read together one two three and that i cannot hear you and that midnight paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto god and prisoners heard them and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all, all the doors were opened and everyone's hands were loose. All the doors, your financial doors, that job you're looking, that door, that marriage you're looking for, that door, that door that you're trusting God, that door is going to be opened if you sing praises to the Lord. And not only you, even the prisoners that shall hear you, even those that shall hear you, they shall also be opened. And so as we worship, I want you to pray and praise with understanding. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the one.
it is no longer you that liveth but Christ that liveth in you and so the Bible says that tell the redeemed of the Lord that it is well with them because nothing compares with the promise that you have inside of him it is well nothing compares to the promise I have to your word because of not keeping their promises but there's nothing that can be compared with the promise that we have in you and this morning we want to thank you and we want to bless you in Jesus name Amen. this morning we want to partake the lost table and the lost table is a reminder of what Jesus did in the past not of what he's going to do in the future, but of what he did in the past. And he said, it is a symbol of a relationship with him. The Holy Communion is about giving and taking. You give your life to him, then you take his life. It's a matter of giving and taking. And this morning, we want to read from the book of Matthew. And it's, uh, Matthew 26 is for Jesus. ministry team to station themselves so that they can distribute the emblems. Matthew 26. Matthew 26, verse 26 to 28. Your love is patient. You feel my heart With so much peace and joy You're amazing You make my life feel brand new All your promises are yes and amen. Your love, the man you never. Jesus, you love me. Jesus, you love me too much. Oh, too much. Oh, too much. Oh, excess love. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Too much, oh, oh, Jesus, you love me too much. Oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, much, oh. love. The lost table is a family meal. And therefore this morning as you pick the emblems don't eat until we do it together. So you come, take the cup and the bread, hold it until we do it together because it is a family meal and we want to do it together. Yes, you can come and take it like the ashes. With so much peace and joy Jesus you're amazing you make my life feel brand new all your promises are 
As you hold the cup in your hand and the bread, think of the love that the Lord loved you with, that he gave his body. His body was broken to pieces so that I and you, your brother and your sister, can have a peace. And this morning the Bible says in the book of Matthew 26, verse 26 to 28, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body. You see, it is not one sentence. It is broken into pieces. He says, Take it. This is my body. May we take the body. Verse number 27. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, not some of you, 
but all of you. Who are these all? All those who are born again. All those who claim Jesus Christ to be their personal savior. He said, take it, drink it, all of you. Verse 28 says, for this, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Let's partake of the cup. Verse 28. Let's continue. For this is my blood. This, we are the children of the new covenant. And this was done because of us. Not because of the Old Testament. But because of the New Testament. The covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Our sins are forgiven. And therefore we do this as a remembrance of what Jesus did for us on the cross. You, were, you and me were to die because of our sins. Because we were sinners. From birth we are, we are sinners. But he did this because he loved. There's nothing else he could have done to show his love than die on the cross for you and me. Therefore take a minute, go before the Lord. Thank God because of what he did on the cross. You were to die. Father, I want to thank you. And I want to honor you this morning. Thank you. Thank you for loving me. And thank you for showing it publicly that you love me, Jesus. You are not ashamed to be crucified on the cross. You are not ashamed to say that you love me. You are not ashamed to say that you can pay the debt of my sin. You are not ashamed, Jesus, to say that it is finished on the cross because of me. You are not a sinner. I was a sinner. I am the one who sinned, but you loved me to an extent of dying for me on the cross. And this morning, I want to thank you. Help me by your grace to live for you. Help me by your grace to live, to give all that I am and that I have to you, so that I can be, give you praise and glory for what you did on the cross. I want to honor you and I want to bless you this morning. Come Jehovah Father, make me what you wanted me to be from the beginning in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I want to thank you and I want to honor you this morning. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King Jesus. We honor you and we bless you this morning. Thank you, Jehovah Father. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus Christ, what an action that you did for us. There's nothing much you could have done more than what you did on the cross for us. Thank you because you saw our sins and you had compassion and you came and died because of our sins. And today we can be called saints because of transaction that took place on the cross. And this morning we want to thank you for your blood. We want to thank you for your body. Because of your body, dear Father, we are healed this morning. Our bodies are healed this morning. And because of your blood, dear Jesus, we've been cleansed from our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you. We want to bless you this morning. We want to die, but you died for us. We want to die, but you are for us. You loved us one lesson. You could not have hold your life for us. We want to honor you this morning. We bless you to your father. You are our father who runs short of nothing to your Lord. You don't run short of patience. You don't run short of love. You don't run short of perseverance. Oh God and our father. The only thing you cannot get in you. It is sin of our father. That's the only thing that is in you Jehovah. There's no sin in you to your father. We want to honor you this morning. We want to bless you our father. You you are the reason that you are living. You are the reason that you are alive. You are the reason that you have good health this morning because of what you did on Calvary. Therefore, this morning, Abba Father, we surrender ourselves to you. Come and do that only you can do in the name of Jesus. We love you, we love you, we love you. Jesus, you love me so much. So much to us, your Father. Oh, Ricardo, Shere, and Arabazica. We bless you. We worship you to your Lord. Help us to love you. Help us to love you, Jesus. Oh, help us to love you. In the midst of every opposition, help us to love you. I make up a decision of living for you all the days of our lives. We thank you. Rebo Shakara Bayanta. Thank you this morning. You are worthy of our praise, dear Jesus. You are worthy of our praise. And how hallelujah belongs to you. We love you. 
and we honor you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's appreciate the worship team. You are blessed worship team. And now, with the joy of the Lord, I want to welcome the man of God. This being his last Sunday. <laughs> last Sunday to preach to us as a single man. Let's welcome Pastor Brian. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Now I want us to lift up our voices and just celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's worthy. Come on, Shiloh, lift up your voice. Celebrate the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now I want you to give a high five to someone on the left and the right. Tell them a happy Palm Sunday. Turn to somebody, tell them a happy Palm Sunday. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says in the book of John chapter 12, while we're still standing, we have already begun our preaching today. But the Bible says in John chapter 12 from verse 12 to 15, I'm reading it in the message, John 12 verse 12 to, the, uh, to 15. It says, the next day, a huge crowd that had arrived for the feast heard that Jesus was entering Jerusalem. They broke off palm branches and went out to meet him. And they cried out, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in God's name. Yes, the king of Israel. Jesus got a young, a young donkey and rode it. And just as the scripture has it, no fear, daughter Zion. See how your king comes riding on donkeys. Called. I want us to make just a prayer or two because today is a significant day for every believer. We say this is Palm Sunday just at the beginning of what we call Holy Week as we go up to commemorating Easter. As Jesus was entering, this is what is called the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. As Jesus is coming into Jerusalem to be proclaimed as the King, to be proclaimed as the Son of David, to be proclaimed as King of Israel, the people cry out Hosanna. If you read Psalm 118, it will tell you Hosanna simply means Lord, save us. It is a cry of salvation. Why are they crying this? Because they had been waiting for the king that was going to come and save them. The savior of Israel that they were waiting for was this one. Why did they need a savior? Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. After the fall of man, Jesus, God himself, come and says to them that there will be the seed of the woman. And the seed of the woman will crush the head of of the serpent or the seed of the serpent. This is the savior that had been told by God himself. This was God's own promise. And so this week, as we are coming into this week, what we are commemorating is God who keeps his promise. God who keeps his word. So if you're looking for salvation, if you're trusting for salvation, I want you to turn to somebody and tell them the savior is here. The Savior has already come. And he's lifted up high. You see, the people are celebrating the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. They are saying, Hosanna, the one who has come to save us has arrived. And we know the one who has come to save us is in this service today. He has arrived. I want you to take a minute and lift up your voice and just bless his name and lift him up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship your name. We celebrate you. We join up with those that cried out and we say Hosanna to the one who has come to save us. Your name alone is lifted. Thank you for keeping your promise, oh God. And we honor you for your salvation this day. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to lift up our voice. Today, churches are gathering all around the world. And as churches are gathering, we are gathering with the same focus. Everywhere in the world where a church that believes in Jesus Christ and the atonement of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. 
everywhere where they gather, I bet today they are remembering that we are coming in. This triumphal entry is the opening of the Holy Week where we remember what Jesus accomplished for the believer. And so I want us to lift up our voices and we're going to pray for the church. The church here at DCIKZ and the church that gathers around today in the world. And we are joining with the crowds and we are saying, Lord, save us in the name of Jesus. That what is the Lord saving the church from? We're asking the Lord to save us from being inwardly focused. That he will, because his blood was shed at such a high cost, that we will stop being inwardly focused, that we will go out. Who is the church? You and me. So you're asking the Lord, Lord, save me from being focused on myself as a young person. That I will not be focused with my comfort here, but that I will be focused with going out to tell other people that you have saved me and you can save them as well. Just a minute, lift up your voice as you make that prayer. You're praying for yourself. You're saying, Lord Jesus, I'm joining up with the crowds in Jerusalem. I am crying out, Hosanna. Lord, save me from being inwardly focused. Send me out to tell the story of your love. This Easter, send me out to tell the story of your love. In the name of Jesus, send me out, send me out, send me out. Send me out. You have already written the story. The script is already laid out. As I go out, I am not beginning from scratch. There is a season that is being celebrated the world over. Easter is upon us. Because you have already done the work, I pray that you will help me to do what is remaining. To tell other people you are the reason for this season. In the name of Jesus, save your church from being inwardly focused. And begin with me, Lord Jesus. Begin with us. Next, I want you to lift up your voice and I want you to pray for your friends and your family. We are praying for those who do not know the Lord. We are going to say, Lord, save us. Save my family. Save my friends. Those who do not yet know you. And let me help you. Please put a name in your mouth. If there is a member of your family you've been trusting for their salvation, lift up your voice and say, Lord, save them. Save them today. Come on, lift up your voice, Shiloh. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. I'm crying out, Lord, save us. Lord, save us. Save our family members. Save our fathers and our mothers. That they may come to know you, whom to know this life eternal. Lord, we are crying out, Hosanna. Save our friends, Lord Jesus. Save our best friends. Save our colleagues that work. Save the people we are trying to do life with. Lord, we cry out this morning. Save us. In the name of Jesus, we cry out. Hosanna, 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 Lord Jesus, save our families and our friends in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I want us to lift up our voices and want to pray for the nation of Kenya. And what we are crying out is we are asking for the leaders of this nation that the Lord will save them. We are praying, Hosanna, Lord, save our leaders in this land. Save our president, save his deputy, save all the officials that are in public office. Save all those CSs, save them from themselves, save them from their selfishness. Draw them closer to you. When they are working with you, they will be better leaders for this nation. Come and lift up your voice, church, and pray that the Lord would save our leaders, that the Lord would save them, that the Lord would remember mercy upon them, that he would grip their hearts today, that he would turn them for himself in the name of Jesus. Hosanna of our leaders, Lord, we pray. Lord, save them. Lord, remember mercy in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. Make Save them, Lord Jesus, that their leadership will be characterized by your wisdom and humility. Save them, O oh God. And they cried out, Blessed is he who comes in God's name. Yes, the King of Israel is lifted up. The King of Kings is lifted. Now I want you to take just a minute longer and now lift up the name of Jesus. Let him know he's lifted in this place. Let him know he's lifted in your heart. Let him know, King Jesus, I lift you up, I lift you up, I lift you up. Oh, oh, oh. Wonderful and glorious Jesus, the Son of God is lifted. Oh, oh, oh. say wonderful, say glorious, say 
your name here in this service today. We lift up your name. You are the king that came to save us, the soon coming king. And how we look forward to you, to your coming into our situations, to your coming into our spaces, and to your coming when all is said and done. When we shall re be caught up with you, Lord Jesus, and we shall spend eternity together forever, allowing that beautiful name. We honor you and we invite you into this place because you already are here. Have your way, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Celebrate Jesus one more time. You may be seated in Jesus' name. One more time, let's put our hands together, celebrate Jesus for this wonderful band. We love you. God bless you. In Jesus' name. What a joy it is to be in the presence of the Lord today. Hiya. The Lord is good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just in case you missed it or in case we are meeting for the first time or in case you're joining us live on Facebook and on YouTube, welcome to Deliverance Church International Kasarani Zimmerman. This is the Shiloh Worship Center and you are in our youth service. We are so glad you could join us. And for the rest of us, we want to say thank you for keeping the appointment and for coming. You look wonderful from where I'm standing. My name is Brian Mashigadi. I'm born again. Jesus Christ is Lord over my life. It is the honor of my life to serve God here. And the Bishop Dr. Jimmy and Pastor Alice Kimani, who is in the house. Come on, somebody celebrate. Amen. We bless the Lord for them. I thank God for all the ministers of the gospel in this place. Um, Pastor B, Pastor John, Pastor Richard, Pastor Paris, Pastor Joy. This service has the most pastors. Pastor Wangeshi, Pastor Paul, Pastor Joe, my pastor Tukila Mahali. I mean, wow. <laughs> We thank God for all of you. Thank you for your service in the vineyard in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 14 is where we are at. Luke chapter 14. And we're reading from verse 15 to verse 35. And I'm going to read fast. This is a parable of the great banquet. All right. The parable of a great banquet. And it says, and now... When one of those who sat at the table with him had these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord, if that the Bible is yours, please underline with one accord, began to make excuses. The first said to him, oh, please underline also make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And the second one said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to test them. I, has, I ask you to have me excused. And the other one said, I have married a wife. Come on, here's somebody. And therefore... <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, I cannot come. Hallelujah. So those, that servant came and reported these things to his master. When the master of the house, being angry, then the master of the house, being angry, angry said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded. But there is still, but there is still, please underline if the Bible is yours, still there is room. Let's continue. Then the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them, underline the word compel them, to come in that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those who are invited shall taste my supper. Now great multitudes went with him and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children, he cannot, on his life, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. In the two lines, if the Bible is yours, please underline, cannot be my disciple. All right. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Lest, after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him. Saying, this man began to build what he was not able to finish. 
or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he's able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all of what he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. That is Bible for I said what I said. And that is the word of the Lord. Now, by the time we're getting to this portion of scripture, Jesus has been going about doing his ministry. He's been going about doing good. He's been going about uh, healing and saving and working great and mighty things. If you're looking for a working title, our working title is The Believer's Practice. And The Believer's Practice today is counting the cost. Counting the cost. Counting their cost. Now Jesus has been going about, he's been doing good, he's been doing the things that only God can do. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. Classic Jesus to go around. Now one of the things, and we've said it here in the youth service before, one of the things that Jesus used to do oh so very much was to attend parties. Jesus went to many banquets and many parties. Jesus set the ball rolling for the believer. <laughs> It is a good place for you to reach other people. It is a good place for you. You see, in a party or at a banquet, you are not necessarily here. The code of conduct might not be what is here. But if your code of conduct there can be still Christ-like, then you can win people for the Lord. When I saw Sifiri. So Jesus used to attend many of these things. In fact, he had been hosted by a high-ranking official. He had been hosted by a person who was not, um, it was not one of his fellow ministers. Okay? He had been hosted by a high-ranking official, and he goes. And so the story going all the way from the top was him having been invited to a place to just go and eat and drink. And there are a lot of things that happen. Now, the thing about Jesus is that he was very against the culture of the day. And it was not the easy conversations. You know, when you're eating with somebody, especially at somebody's house, you don't want to offend that person. If you have gone on a date with somebody and you know so sure well that they are the ones who are paying for that date, you don't want to offend them. So the prize for your silence or for your good manners is the plate of food. So you just sit down there, even when their views are not right. Somebody sits there and they're saying, hey, by the way, you know, these Christians, the way these days they're behaving themselves. Hey, me, I think this Christianity, by the way, people should just stop going around, going around, just making noise, this Christianity. It should be in the heart. And you're seated there, you know you love the Lord well, well with all your heart. You're just cutting into the chicken, cutting into it, filling your mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're hoping that your intonation will stand for you. He's just like, mm. Mm. I'm like, mm. I'm like, oh, yeah. But you can't say anything because but Jesus, we can learn a lot from him. In school, Zana school used to sing, I want to be like Jesus deep down in my so deep, deep. That's right, so deep down in my heart. Those people who skip Sunday school classes, there's redemption for us in the house today. So we want to be like Jesus deep down in our hearts. How was Jesus like? You look at the character of Jesus and Jesus seated at that table. If you go through just above from verse um, 14 upwards, you find that the conversation that Jesus had started was not a good dinner time conversation. It was not a good conversation for the table. It was ruffling feathers. In fact, from where we started in verse, was it verse 14, was it verse 14? Um, yes, from verse 15, from where we started. This one man that is speaking, he is exclaiming and he's speaking just to break the awkwardness. Have you been at an awkward dinner? Let me help you. I have myself. At a place where you're seated and you're just a table of people and the topics that are being discussed are just hot topics. And you just, you're like, ooh, ooh, ooh. you're just filling your mouth awkward dinner. So you are seated there. It was an awkward dinner. Jesus had ruffled feathers. He had said many things. In fact, some of the things that Jesus had said, said, when you give a dinner or a supper, a dinner, a meitua. 
Lakini anasema, when you give a dinner, do not ask your friends and your brothers or your relatives or your rich neighbors to come because they will also invite you back and you have there received your payment. But when you give a feast, invite the poor. I mean, wait, we are seated in this table. I have invited you to my house. Then you start telling me, but then you have to invite you to a feast, you have to bash. You have to invite you to my house and you have to invite you to presents. You have to invite you to wale machoko chonyo wako huko nje wale wasewenye ajiwezi unaenda tu kwa kota eh wale 